I know. Hello. Hi. All right, you need to get down now. Hi, I'm Brian with Take One, and today we're going to be going over the steps that you should take to make the most effective VFX shots. So the VFX shot we're going to break down today is a shot of a hockey puck slamming into a wall from a commercial that we did last winter. There are a lot of effects used in the actual shot itself, but today we're gonna to be going over mostly the steps that you need to take, planning, executing, and delivering a final VFX shot just like this. Now, while visual effects technically falls under post-production, the process of making a VFX shot actually starts in the early stages of pre-production. First, have to conceptualize and develop what your VFX shot is going to be and how it impacts the story of the film that you're making or the commercial that you're making. And also, how is it going to be integrated with the rest of the shots that you're getting and the sequence that you're making? In this instance, we wanted to show the power you have when using this certain brand of hockey sticks. And we wanted to show that in an exaggerated, but fun and exciting kind of way. Obviously, an effect like this is impossible to do in real life, but it grabs the viewer's attention and kind of acts like a metaphor of how powerful your slap shot can be with this hockey stick. So as important pre-production is to the process, production itself is actually just as important, if not even the most important step of the process of making a VFX shot. The execution of the shot while filming will make or break the shot itself. And if you're not able to shoot it correctly on set, the shot was ultimately not going to work. You have to take into account what VFX tools you might need on set, such as green screens or tracking points. Also, what kind of production design and practical effects are going to aid in making your effect. In this case, we actually sawed a puck in half and then taped it to the wall. We also drew on some practical cracks into the wall to add to the realism. Anything that you can do practically on set is going to go really far once you get to post-production. You also need to think about the shots that are coming before and after of your VFX shot. In this case, we used a whip hand to make it look more like a continuous shot when he hits the puck and to add more dynamic movement to the effect. Adding more movement like this and adding more camera shake to a VFX shot can ultimately help sell the realism of that shot. To give an example, this is how the VFX shot would look if there was no camera movement added to it. Now what is sometimes overlooked but is just as important is the shot afterward that follows the VFX shot. The shot following this one works so well because we use a practical effect here to help build the story of what just happened and we also see the character's reaction to it as well. If you work solely in production it's always good to consult with your VFX editor or director before you attempt to execute the VFX shot on set. And finally we move on to post-production and from here it's honestly just playtime. You string your clips together, you do your camera tracking, and you plug in the effects that you've been waiting for and visualizing since day one. The types of effects you'll use will solely depend on what kind of project you're making, but there are some effects that typically work well across the board for any project that you're doing. In the case of this project, a little extra camera shake and post really helps sell the impact of the puck and adds a bit more exaggeration afterwards. Things like radial blurs and dust elements also add to the impact of the puck and adding extra crack elements in there and having them kind of grow in over time and it also can help magnify the impact even more. It's always important to color and modify your added elements to the scene so they look like they blend into the scene and they don't look too much like stock footage. While it's important to add realism to these effects, it's also important to consider the effects that add some surrealism to the shot. And these are elements like the fire glow and the extra impacts to the wall. You sometimes need to toe the line between fantasy and reality. The fantasy of making these shots over the top is really appealing, but you also want to make sure they do look like they could exist in the world that you're making. While it could look cool to add all this extra fire and sparks coming off this effect, it doesn't really work because the shot becomes a little goofy and a little unrealistic. In some cases, you might lean toward more fantastical effects than realism, and that's great, as long as it's the best fit for your piece. And last but not least, what makes a VFX shot work so well is its sound. Every good VFX shot needs good sound design behind it. This is what our shot would look like if there was no sound behind it. There's a lot missing and there's no energy behind it and it looks more fake. Sound really helps sell the illusion of a shot. You want to add in the most accurate sound that you can and even record fully if you have to. And with a shot like this, we take it even further by adding stronger whoosh and impact sounds to help intensify the effect. Sound design can be challenging when it comes to making a soundscape for sounds that don't actually exist, such as like magic. In this case, it's helpful to watch other examples like TV shows and movies that use similar effects and see what kind of sounds that they use. So like I mentioned before, in the end, there are a lot more steps to a VFX shot than just post-production. In the future, we will be doing more VFX breakdowns on some of the shots that we've done over the years and reveal our step-by-step -step process for making those shots. 
I also will be doing some more in-depth videos on what After Effects tools we use to make these effects. Look forward to those videos and much, much more every week on Take One.